Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome to this mental house with me, your host, Khadija. Um, and when you get some time, uh, please go over to Mental House 2. Come clean with it and uh, check out our second page because um, YouTube is just, you know, doing some real, real flaky stuff. But that's not why I'm here. As y'all know, March, I mean, May is Mental Health Month, right? And so we got a situation here that's so damn crazy. And I don't want to hear none of you Negroes over here uh, trying to say what women do wrong. I don't want to hear none of y'all Negroes over here saying anything uh, like you need proof of a predator, of a coward. All rolled into one like a damn sandwich. You don't need proof no more because it was presented to you. Um, a man, first of all, at 19, or a woman, or whatever, dating somebody 20 years younger than them, trust me, they already believe they have the upper hand because they know they got your mind, okay? They know it's not hard to manipulate you at your age. And they have a little bit more uh, experience than you do. I don't care how much life you've lived. Uh, there's just something about a person. If you haven't had a life that will allow you to think that you have wisdom. Sometimes it hit and it miss. You know what I'm saying? And but but the core of it, usually, a younger person can be manipulated by an older person. Okay, I don't want to say every time, so I'll just say some, but not all. A majority, but not all. But that's, for me, always a red flag. Like, why you want somebody that much younger than you? Unless you just, you know, want them to go out and party. Um, because usually when you hit certain milestones in your life, you don't want to be around a generation like that that you've already been in. You've already been a 20-year-old. Why would you want to hang around with a bunch of 20-year-olds? So, for me. I ain't talking about for nobody, but it all it's also a testament to a lot of people that have been brought up watching this kind of abuse, dealing with this kind of abuse. They've normalized it. That's why you can hear, uh, especially black people, black people are so used to pain. We got pain bodies, and y'all get mad when I say that, that we're addicted to drama. More than any other group, and it's only because of our beatings that we took. It's only because of the pain that was introduced to us that we gravitate towards this kind of stuff. I'm not saying nobody else don't do it. That's not well, I want you to hear me good. In the hood, that's an everyday relationship. Think about it. There's only a few families in a neighborhood that don't act like that okay and the mother and father have a little bit more uh they might be a they're a couple that been together for a while or um it could be all kinds of dynamics they're a couple that go to church so i'm not saying every couple in the hood perform this way but more than not them kids is getting up Watching this kind of behavior with their daddy beating their mother's ass like this. Okay? And then you have sorry-ass black women who try to protect men like this because for some reason the pain that they have they in their bodies and in their minds is, ooh, well, I don't want to turn them over to the white man. I don't want to turn him into the judicial system, even though he beating your black butt. It's all mixed up. Okay? So most kids that have grown up with a grid like this, that's what the that's what the grooves are in their record. 
to be able to accept this kind of stuff, um, to normalize it, basically. And that's why when you see his son, King Combs, say, uh, so so out, out of disconnected that he would say something as foolish as, uh, this was uh, 2016, uh, who leaked it or some shit like that. But the point, fool, is your father shouldn't be doing this to nobody. So you don't watch that. Now, what are you going to do if you find out that your father uh, unalived your mother? You're going to have a whole lot of therapy to get through. If you ain't in none now, you better start. Because your father and the mentality that he has has rubbed off on you because it's what you see in your grid is low. And Delilah Starr and Jesse James, they done seen something. They, they um, vibration is low. All because of him. I ain't talking about how much money y'all got. Because that makes you even more shallow. Okay? Because with all that money, you doing stuff that uh, uh, sh poor people in the hood don't. I mean, I mean, act like that. Most of the time when you've accumulated a little bit of, of money, a lot of times uh, your um, thinking process, there should be an elevation. Or, you know, you should be hanging around different people and you should have the money to pay for therapists and things and you don't want to uh, be the same person you was when you didn't have no money. That's how most people use their money once they get a little toehold. They want to better themselves. Not take that trash to Hollywood or wherever you at. You dragging that, that negativity right along with you? So my thing is, dude, what did you see growing up? What did you see? See, if we was to get real, real about it, how did your mama show up in her relationship with you? And I'm not blaming her and saying that it's her fault. Puffy is responsible for this. Sean Combs, Sean John Combs is responsible. I'm just asking a question. What kind of family, what kind of mama, because they said his father was uh, all that, but he was a snitch. Uh, and if he was a low-grade pimp, what you think his mama was? Could it be possible that she was his... Well, just something worth thinking about. And all I'm saying is, the fact that uh, his son would say something like that means that he's normalized abuse, and maybe he knows that his father is capable of or did something to his mother. Maybe because he's a little narcissist too, maybe he don't care. Maybe he is a little narcissist, because it's clearly that the father is one, a dangerous one at that. Because he like to beat up women. He's a coward. He's a punk bitch. What we call. See he likes to beat up women. And. Um, if it's a man involved. He's going to get. One of his henchmen. To do the work. He's not going to put no hands on him. Not like. He put them on them women. So. You keep your always keep your grass cut low because these snakes is out here. Puffy is a snake. And so now for all of y'all that said you didn't believe he did nothing like that, and for all of y'all who try to give him a pass, shame on you. Nobody should up here and gotta make up crazy shit like all the stuff that the um specific stuff she was saying. Don't you know how embarrassing that is? Don't you know how embarrassing it is? First of all, and to tell people that you stayed because she already know. Thank God that he sent her somebody. He sent her somebody that cared about her. Not like Puffy that was just using her. And, you know, she was eye candy. And he was beating the mess out of her, bruising her up and doing all those destructive things to that young lady. That he wouldn't want nobody to do to his daughter. 
Or maybe would he care? So miss me with the bullshit. Miss me with making excuses for him. He's a trash bag. Sean John Combs is a trash bag. And I hope he get everything coming to him that he deserves. Okay? Now, all this stuff is being exposed. How they say it? When the moon is in the seventh house. Y'all get it? And Jupiter aligns with Mars. Then peace will guide the planet. And love will fill the stars. Okay? But there's going to be some revealing first. And Cat Williams said it best. <laughs> My man Cat. 2024, all shit shall be revealed. All good. So with that being said, if you like what you hear, please like and subscribe to my channel and um, share it with somebody. And I appreciate you being out there, family. Thank you for hanging in there with me. And I'll see you in the next video.